Yep. So, how have you been? <laughs> it's been a while. Have you ever felt trapped inside the same room for weeks, slowly losing track of what day it is, or longing for nothing more than just a change of scenery? Well, best you can do in these times is to transport yourselves to vibey chambers, take a load off your plate, and put that spring back in your step with reverb. So in this video, you're gonna learn five essential tips for using reverb on vocals. So the first tip is about what type of reverb you want, specifically a long or short reverb. If you wanna learn more about types of reverbs like plate, spring, or chamber, you can check out this video where you can challenge your ears to hear the difference between popular types of reverb. Now for vocals, I definitely like plates because it's a very classic sound. So the length of the reverb can depend on a few factors, the most being the tempo, as well as the busyness of the part. When you have a slower tempo, there will be more space between the beats, and that can be filled with a longer reverb time. And in the same way, long notes or very sparse phrasing can have some benefit from having reverb fill in the gaps of the mix. Let's have a listen. In this example, I've got the lead vocals going to a bus, and we're gonna try out a few different reverbs. The first being a shorter reverb, and the second being a bit longer. First, we're gonna start with a short reverb, and I'm using this little plate plugin because it's a really, really simple interface. You can tell exactly what's going on. So we have a decay of one second here, and let's see how that sounds. And I have, I've cranked it up pretty far so you can, uh, you can really hear what it sounds like. Woke up quick, felt half cut, forgot my dreams and sleep too much. Body aches, can barely move, gotta drag myself on back to you. And let's uh, have a listen to that in solo. Woke up quick, felt half cut, forgot my dreams, didn't sleep too much. So you can see that after those phrases, there's really not a lot of information. This is just kind of providing a little bit of glow around the lead vocal. But listen to what happens when we bring that up. We're gonna bring it up to four seconds. Woke up quick, felt half cut, forgot my dreams, didn't sleep too much. Awesome, and then again with the mix. Woke up quick, felt half cut, forgot my dreams, didn't sleep too much. So there's this big cloud of ambience that sticks around after the vocals have stopped singing. And this can be a good thing, this can be a bad thing. It really depends on the tempo and how busy your track is. If your song is at a faster tempo or your singer delivers syllables very quickly, like if your vocalist is rapping, you might be better off with a little bit of short reverb because a longer reverb is just gonna muddy everything up and make it harder to understand the lyrics. So why does this happen? One way of illustrating this phenomenon is the classroom analogy. If you're at the front of a classroom in the front row, you're gonna have a easier time hearing and understanding the teacher than if you were sitting in the back row. Do you have any guesses as to why? Hmm. Well, the further you are from the speaker, the more you hear the room around you, which means the less direct sound reaches your ears. What would be direct sound to the students sitting in the front row is now colored off of the room reflections from the walls, the floor, and the ceiling. And this is gonna smear the clarity of the sound and make it more difficult to make out what is being said, even if you can still hear the speaker talking. But what if you wanna have a huge cathedral reverb and still understand each word clear as day? Well, that brings us to tip number two, use pre-delay. This is probably the most important knob for vocal reverb because it allows you to set the space for the dry vocals to be understood before the reverb kicks in. Yes, pre-delay greatly increases the intelligibility of speech by separating that dry vocal from the wet reverb for just enough time that the audience will have an easier time deciphering the message of the lyrics because they can be heard more clearly. So pre-delay allows you to mix together those two positions from the previous classroom example. You get all that coloration as if you were at the back of the room, all the lush reverb that we love on vocals, but it's slightly delayed so that the dry sound comes first and this will keep the vocals at the front of the mix while also adding that cloud of ambience that sits further back in the mix. A good starting place for vocal reverb pre-delay is around 50 milliseconds. At least, that's what I was taught to do in my live sound class, but you can actually get some really interesting effects by playing around with this one knob. I actually love to crank it up even more, sometimes past 100 or 120 milliseconds, which is also a setting that's used by Chris Lordalge. So let's have a quick listen to both these settings with and without pre-delay. Woke up quick, felt half cut, forgot my dreams, didn't sleep too much. 
body aches, can barely move, gotta drag myself on back to you. So you can definitely hear the reverb sitting on top of the vocal, and it might be a little hard to pick out exactly what the vocalist is saying. All of the intelligibility is a little bit smeared from that reverb. So this is where pre-delay comes in. This is our best friend when we're using reverb on vocals, because what it's gonna do is it's gonna push back that reverb so there's a short amount of time where we're actually hearing a dry vocal before that reverb kicks in. So I'm gonna crank this up just a little bit, and then we're gonna, again, solo the vocals, and you can hear the effect that that's gonna have. Woke up quick, felt half cut, forgot my dreams, didn't sleep too much. And if we crank it up past 100 milliseconds, it's gonna become much more noticeable. Woke up quick, felt half cut, forgot my dreams, didn't sleep too much. Now, if you're using a plugin that doesn't have pre-delay, like if you're on the little plate over here, you can actually put an echo plugin right before. I've got it for a really short delay, a 16th note triplet, and I've got the feedback relatively low, 100% wet, and what that's gonna do is delay the signal. You're gonna have a single repeat, and then that's gonna go into the reverb. And when you combine that with your dry signal, you're gonna get the effect of having a pre-delayed reverb. So let's move on to tip number three. So far we've adjusted the length of your vocal reverb as well as the pre-delay. And next we're gonna take a look at filtering your reverb with EQ because chances are if you've added reverb to a vocal, you're not looking to add ambience to the entire frequency spectrum. I mean, that's really gonna muddy up your mix. So our next step is gonna to be to filter out those unnecessary high and low frequencies. So a lot of software will allow you to do this filtering from inside the plugin. The Abbey Road Signature Reverb Sound that you may have heard of filters its lows at 100 hertz and the highs at 10 kilohertz. And this is a good starting place for reverb that isn't muddy or overly bright, but it maintains the ambience within the mids. So the plugin version is actually a little different. The treble is a shelf at four kilohertz and the bass has three positions starting at 10 hertz and going up to one kilohertz. So it's 10 hertz a hundred hertz and then one kilohertz. So let's put it at number two for now and just roll off a little bit of that treble to make it a bit darker and let's hear the difference. Woke up quick, felt half cut, forgot my dreams, didn't sleep too much. Body aches, can barely move, gotta drag myself on back to you. It's time to sober So as you can hear, that's just taking off a little bit of the sheen of the reverb. It's not overly bright and distracting, and it's also not going to be boomy, adding an, a whole bunch of extra clutter to the low end because we've rolled off below 100 hertz. So by now, we've got a great sounding reverb send that's really gonna make your lead vocals pop. But more importantly, we can't forget the background vocals. Effects like reverb add depth to the mix. So the more reverb we place on a sound, the further away it appears to be because we're hearing more of that room sound than we are the direct sound. And this is very useful for keeping background vocals in the background. I would usually recommend putting most of your reverb towards pushing supporting tracks further back in the mix to make the more important tracks stand out by contrast. Sometimes you can get away with using the same reverb on the lead vocal and just sending more to the background vocal, but if you want more control, it's beneficial to create dedicated reverbs for both your lead and background vocals because these are supporting tracks, the clarity and the presence is not as important as the lead track. So you can usually get away with a shorter pre-delay and a long longer reverb time to keep them in the background. Let's have a listen to that. The background vocals, I've actually got them on a separate bus and I've got a separate send going to that same reverb. You might wanna set up a completely different reverb, maybe with a longer time, maybe a shorter pre-delay to really push them back. Uh, but for right now, I'm just using the same reverb for this demonstration, but I'm gonna push them up a little bit more so that they have more reverb than our lead vocal here. I'm gonna bring that down. And then what that's gonna do is just give the lead vocals a little bit of ambience I've, I also did have a delay on there that I've got muted right now, but for the background vocals, I've got them really pushing into that reverb. So the background vocals come up in the chorus in the next verse here. Let's have a listen to the next verse. I'll take my chances, just let me spin my wheels. I crave that feel one late night 
chase what's real On to another hope I live I will recover Never want this body to end Okay, so let's have a listen to that same passage without any reverb on the vocals. I'll take my chances, just let me spin my wheels I crave that feel one late night to chase what's real On to another hope I live but will recover Never want this body to end Okay, not bad, but everything definitely kind of sits together on the same plane of depth. And we really want to create some separation here so that the background vocals sound really ethereal. They sound like they're coming from everywhere, but they're more of a texture. They're more further back in the mix. So let's add in our reverb again. Let's hear the difference between a lot of reverb and no reverb on the lead vocal. I'll take my chances, just let me spin my wheels. I crave that feel one late night to chase what's real. On to another hope I live but will recover. Never want this body to wear. So you can really hear those background vocals stay in the background because they have so much reverb on them. And if we think back to that analogy of the classroom, it's like the background vocals are sitting at the very back of the class where the lead vocal is much closer to the front. And that's what we want. We wanna create this back to front depth hierarchy. And this is gonna give our mix a little bit more of a textured three-dimensional feel. And the super secret last tip, tip number five that I have for you in this video is to automate your reverb. Yes, automation is always the secret sauce that will take your mixes to the next level. You can automate the amount of reverb on a vocal to match the intensity of a performance and make the vocal react more naturally like it would inside of a space. So if your vocalist is singing very softly, there shouldn't be very much reverb. When you're singing in a room, you're not gonna pick up as much reflection when you sing quietly. The louder you sing, the more the room you're going to excite as your voice bounces off the walls. A great example of this is the vocal sound of David Bowie in his song Heroes. The delivery of the vocal changes drastically over the six minute tune. It begins with him singing at a speaking level with no reverb applied and when the delivery of the vocal becomes much more emotional with loud belting, the room reverb is added to mimic the ambience that would accompany such a loud performance. I mean in this example it's actually achieved with multiple mics at different distances with gates so that the further mics would only be triggered when Bowie sang loud enough but that's a technique for another video. Let me know if you want to hear more about that. Okay, but you can actually achieve pretty much the same effect by automating your vocal reverb to match the energy curve of the performance. For example, in the verse here at the beginning, we might not put a lot of reverb because the singer isn't really belting yet. They're not really singing out. But there's a moment in this song that gets uh, much more intense towards the second bridge here. And we're going to want to really address that and make it stand out with a little bit of automation. So let's have a listen to that as it stands right now without any reverb because I believe I have the automation on. Awesome. So we've got this huge scream here that could definitely be augmented with a little bit of reverb. If we go to our vocal reverb track here that I've created and click A for automation, you can see that I have bumped up the volume here of that track so that we get a little bit more reverb, but that's not actually the best way to do this because that means that I've lost control of this fader. If I go and I say, hmm, I actually don't want enough reverb, and then it goes over this part, watch what happens to the fader. It snaps right back into place because this automation lane is telling it to be at 0.0 dB. So this can lock your faders and it's overall not really a great idea. So what you can do is you can go into the Abbey Road plugin and find your output level. We have a left and we have a right. It doesn't seem like we can actually do these both together. Hmm. So the solution here is to grab a gain plugin and then create an automation lane for the gain. And all we wanna do is in this part where there's a screen, we're gonna create four little dots, and then we're just gonna pull this up, maybe two decibels, so that that reverb is just amplified during that scream. Awesome. 
awesome. So just like that, we've achieved that and we can still, if we decide, ah, you know what, it's still a little bit too loud, we have complete control over our fader. Let me show you. Okay, so we can move that fader anywhere we want. We have complete control, but we also have our automation. Very powerful. So another little bonus tip that you can do here um, that I actually did is I added in a saturation plugin just to turn on at this time so it really makes the reverb noticeable, not just turning it up, but also adding some harmonics so the reverb's a little bit thicker. But you can actually do that within the Abbey Road plugin because they have a drive knob, which is very cool. So you could go into Abbey Road to drive, and then you can create, whereas, oh, it's way down here. You can create the exact same little nudge to turn that up just a little bit. Let's have a listen. So that's gonna help thicken up your reverb and make it a bit more noticeable for these really intense one-time events in your song. A more modern example of this would be Chandelier by Sia. There's no noticeable reverb on the vocal in the verse where the singer is almost muttering as if hung over after a late night bender. And it's only at the very dramatic chorus where the vocal comes alive with a great deal of reverb to support that strong delivery of the vocals. And this is gonna make the vocals stand out because of that lack of reverb that came before the chorus. So instead of always just adding more, think about what parts of your song could actually benefit from having less. And you can start your automation from there. I would also recommend automating things like volume or gain from inside the plugin so you always have control over your fader and send level. And I don't know about you, but I always get annoyed after I automate the volume and then I lose control of the faders. Just save yourself some trouble and automate from inside the plugin. There's so much more to learn about reverb and mixing that couldn't possibly fit into this video. But if you'd like to learn more shortcuts to improve your mixes, I invite you to check out the seven level essential mixing checklist. With this course, you'll be able to balance even the most difficult mix and create and deliver a professional song. Discover simple and effective ways to use essential mixing tools with this step-by-step -step blueprint to help you approach, work through, and deliver stronger mixes in much less time. A link to that course is in the description. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Life can feel so unfair, see